please forgive my use of text-to-speech. My analog headset microphone is just way too noisy. Should I continue to make these I'll have to buy a proper microphone. Suggestions are welcome. If it is not analog it has to play well with Ubuntu. To the point. Why don't you just shut the fuck up you limey bastard. Which brings about my confusion as to whether the term limey refers to the English or the British, since I've always assumed that you are a Scot by your accent. But then again, I'm pretty much retarded when it comes to identifying accents, which is attested by the numerous eye rolls I've received from Kiwis I've mistaken for Australians. So this is one of these videos, I've got a couple of questions here from my American colleagues uh, in the USA. Uh, and I know for some of them, it's gonna, if it was me actually, if I was American and I, I, because it must be like if you're American, there must be this kind of aspect where it's like everybody seems to feel enabled to just fucking discuss our issues as if they're their own, or, or as if they can just fucking start give, dishing out the advice. Uh, whereas they don't do it with anybody else, and I kind of get that. Take it as a compliment, take it as a tickle under the chin. You're Sure foreigners can have opinions about the goings on here. I often scratch my head at why you allow a bunch of funny talking people in Brussels tell you what to do. Besides, they're only foreigners. I'm only going to speak for proper right thinking Americans. There are going to be some who have the same citizenship who disagree with me in whole or part. They are known as commie pinko fags and they can speak for themselves. First question. One of the responses from the from the sort of pro gun lobby to the anti gun lobby is, well, we've got a, a Second Amendment right to a right to bear arms, right? Is is what it is, isn't it? Which apparently doesn't mean you can uh, wear a t-shirt, uh, which is such a shit joke. I, I don't even know. I did that. It's, it's almost as bad as the other joke I have about about having bears. Uh, I, I don't even really get to describe the fucking joke. Well, you've got a Second Amendment right to bear arms, but surely. Surely what, what we're saying is, or not what we're saying because it's not me saying it, but surely what they're saying is that the sort of anti-gun lobby, when they say we should ban guns, what they're saying is we need to do away with that, isn't it? We need to amend that. I mean, I, I don't know much about the US Constitution, right? I'm a bit fucking ignorant about that, so please explain it to me if that's what it requires. But you can amend it, right? It's a living document, you can amend it. And I kind of gather that by the fact that you already have these things called amendments. So it's been amended in the past. So unless, I don't know, unless the last amendment you made was an amendment to say there ain't going to be any more fucking amendments, it can be amended. So how is it an argument to say, no, 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 you know, we're not going to do that because we've got a second amendment right. Well, yeah, but we're going to amend that so you won't have a second amendment right. Isn't that, isn't that kind of what, what the position is? So I just, I'm interested in that. And the misunderstanding here is that the Second Amendment grants the right to keep and bear arms. It has been understood since at least the Declaration of Independence that rights are antecedent to governments and that the proper role of government is to protect those pre-existing rights. In fact, there was considerable debate as to whether or not to include a Bill of Rights in the Constitution for fear that it would later be interpreted as exhaustive. When they did adopt the Bill of Rights they included the Ninth Amendment to prevent just that. You confess your ignorance regarding the US Constitution. That's fine, there's no reason to expect anything else of you. I'd just like to point out that you could just read it. Unlike the Magna Carta and its revisions, it's in English, surprisingly clear English considering the number of lawyers involved. It's also a very short document. You could finish it over the time of a difficult poo. And yes, two paths of amendment are spelled out in section 5. It's been done 27 times. That's an average of once every 8.4 years. So, it's not unduly difficult. Especially when you consider how many retarded amendments there have been. The reason the prohibitionists don't move to repeal the second amendment is that they simply don't have the votes to do it. If I went to live in the United States, my position would probably still be anti-gun because that just seems... If you could get rid of all those guns, I, I don't see really what's, what purpose is it serving people having all these things that are designed to kill another person if they don't really need them. But it's got to be, it'd have to be a really fucking long-term plan, right? Because there's no simple solution. You've got to kind of um, 
disarm. It's like you've got to de-escalate it over decades, decades, maybe 50 years, 100 years, whatever. One little step at a time. Give that years to feed through. You know, we're going to take this away. Wait for years. Take this next step away. That's probably how I would look at it. I'll ignore your recitation of stats. There is really nothing to dispute there. You did, I think, unwittingly, explain why so many of us oppose any restrictions by outlining the strategy of the prohibitionists. They just go for a little bit at a time arguing that this or that restrictions isn't a big deal. Until they reach a tipping point where they will start arguing that there are already so many restrictions that they might as well just completely ban them, probably by citing the costs of enforcing the myriad of restrictions. Undemocratic, doesn't it? You've, you've got to be a real hater of democracy to say, well, it doesn't matter if everybody in the country wants this, I'm still not going to give my guns up. I Your argument that it is undemocratic is pretty much the same as the one used against gay marriage. The fact that most people find gay sex icky has as much bearing on the rights of gays to go about their icky gay business as the fact that some people find guns scary has on the rights of people to go about their gun business. No one should have to justify to the, the state the exercising of their rights. The other thing is that, that the other one I've got, that it's tough to get my head around from a kind of, I don't know, European perspective. Maybe we just have a different idea on the state and our government and, a, 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 and on our armed forces. But I've heard this one before from the real gun nuts, which is that we need our guns because the army have got guns. But it's not like somebody else's army, it's like their own army. It's like the US Army have got guns, so we need guns to protect ourselves from our own army. And that's just like, that's just like mind-blowing to me. That's just like, I just ca cannot understand where that comes from. You need to protect yourself from your own army. Remember, in 1775 the Redcoats were our army as well. It's not like the US armed force is just like any old fucking run of the mill armed force they're fucking like, they're like, the, like the bee's knees of armed forces aren't they, they are the dog's bollocks of armed forces and however many fucking guns you have dotted around your house right, you may as well not fucking bother because it's, you, they'll just drone strike you I mean they're, they're... this is the usual canard about relative strength of the US army and an armed population I used to play a lot of tabletop war games. At one point I noticed that they don't take in the economic considerations of armed conflict. I'm using the term economic in its broadest sense, not just the material cost of the conflict itself. You have to consider whether or not the objective is worth the cost of achieving it. Those costs include the morale of your soldiers, the willingness of your population to support the conflict, and your credibility among a whole slew of other things. If a soldier sent in to suppress a rebellion sees his math teacher in his sights, he is going to question whether or not he is on the right side. If the population sees a bunch of civilians getting mowed down on YouTube they are going to start asking similar questions, as will the rest of the world. Then the question of collateral damage makes it even more difficult. If it were simply a question of who has more and bigger guns ISIS would be gone by now. There are other reasons for an armed citizenry. Rioting for example. Look into the Koreans and the 1992 LA riots. Finally, a personal anecdote. Several months ago I had a cab get so sick he needed to be put down. It was a Saturday afternoon so all the vet's offices were closed and the coming Monday was a holiday. I am not strong enough to strangle him, or cut his throat or to brain him with a large rock. I also don't own a gun. Nor does anybody I know. I would have liked to have been able to go to a gun shop and get one but I live in California, which has a mandatory waiting period. So the cat had to wait until Tuesday morning. Fortunately I think he was so out of it that he probably didn't suffer too much.